Hello and welcome. In this math tutorial, I'll show you a very easy way to solve this square root equation without having to square both sides of the equation and run into a quartic equation. Now, to do this, let us first of all look at the equation. You know that for real roots, this square root must be positive, right? Very good. So that means that this quantity, that is 5 minus x squared, is only allowed to be greater than or equal to zero. So we have that this must be greater than or equal to zero. When we subtract five from both sides of this inequality, we have that minus x squared must be greater than or equal to minus five. And of course, when we multiply both sides of this inequality by minus one, we have that x squared must be less than or equal to five. Because you know that when you multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number, then you must flip the sign. And from here, we have that the absolute value of x must be less than or equal to the square root of 5. And the square root of 5 is approximately equal to 2.236. So we will keep this somewhere until later when we are going to need it. And now to solve the equation, we are going to begin with a very simple substitution. Let the square root of x plus 5, that is this, be equal to y. And of course, this implies that y squared is going to be equal to x plus 5. Now, rearranging this equation, we have that x is equal to y squared minus 5. And of course, from the original equation, since this is now equal to y, we have that y is equal to 5 minus x squared. Now look at these two equations. You will see that if we add this equation to this equation, we are going to eliminate 5. Because of course, minus 5 plus 5 is equal to 0. So when we add these two equations, we have that x plus y is equal to y squared minus x squared. Now we can also write this as x plus y is equal to minus x squared plus, or rather this is minus y squared. Because you know that when we open this bracket, this is going to be minus x squared, minus, minus y squared, and minus, minus is plus. Now, let us bring this term over to the left-hand side of the equation. When we do that, we have that x plus y plus, because minus going over the equality sign becomes positive. x squared minus y squared is equal to zero but look at this you will immediately see the difference of two squares and you know how we factorize that so the left hand side of this equation is going to be x plus y plus x minus y multiplied by x plus y is equal to zero now look at these two terms. You're going to see a repeated factor, and that is x plus y, x plus y. So we can factorize. And when we do that, we have x plus y into x plus y divided by x plus y is 1. Plus, that is this plus. And this divided by x plus y is going to leave us with x minus y and of course this is still equal to zero and from here we have that the product of these two quantities is equal to zero that simply means that either x plus y is equal to zero or one plus x minus y is equal to zero and of course from here we have that y is equal to minus x and from here we have that y is equal to x plus 1. Remember that this is equal to y. So now we have that either 
minus x is equal to 5 minus x squared or x plus 1 is equal to 5 minus x squared. So now we have broken this equation into two different quadratic equations which we can very easily solve for values of x and this is exactly what we are going to do. And now in the first case to solve this quadratic equation we begin by rearranging the equation. We bring this term over to the left hand side of the equation. When we do that we have x squared minus x is equal to 5. We cannot factorize this quadratic equation, so let us solve by completing the square. And to do that, we must add the square of half the coefficient of x to both sides of the equation. Now, what is the coefficient of x? It is minus 1. What is half of it? It is minus half. So we are going to add this to both sides of this equation to complete the square. We have x squared minus x plus minus half squared is equal to 5 plus minus half squared is 1 over 4. Now you can see that the left hand side of this equation is a perfect square. So we take 1x and we take 1 minus half and we square. And this is going to be equal to 4 times 5 is 20 plus 1. 21 over 4. The next thing we do is to take square root of both sides of this equation. When we do that, we have that x minus half is equal to plus or minus the square root of 21 over 4. But we know that 4 is a perfect square. So this is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 21 over 2. So now we have two values for x. We have that x is equal to half plus or minus square root of 21 over 2. And coming to the second equation, once more, we begin by rearranging the equation. We bring this over to the left hand side of the equation. When we do that, we have x squared plus x. We take this constant term over to the right hand of the equation. We have 5 minus 1, which is equal to 4. Now, once more, we cannot factorize this quadratic equation, so let us also solve by completing the square. We add the square of half the coefficient of x to both sides of the equation. What is the coefficient of x in this case? It is plus 1. Half of it is half and the square of that is going to be 1 over 4. So this is going to be x squared plus x plus half squared is equal to 4 plus 1 over 4. Once more, this is a perfect square. So we take 1x and we take 1 plus half and we square. And this is equal to 4 times 4 is 16 plus 1. That is 17 over 4. We take square root of both sides of this equation. When we do that, we have that x plus half is equal to plus or minus the square root of 17 over 4. And of course, this is equal to plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2. So once more, we have two more values for x. We have that x is equal to, here we have minus half plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2. Now that we have four values of x, the last part of the calculation will be to find how many of these four values satisfy this requirement. So we start with the first one. We have half, that is 0 0.5 plus the square root of 21 is approximately 4.583 and this is over 2. This is 0 0.5 plus 2 into 4 is 2. 2 into 5 is 2. Carry 1, 2 into 18 is 9. 
and 2 into 3 is 1, 5. 0 0.5 plus 2.2915 is equal to 2.7915. And you can see that this value of x is not less than or equal to 2.236. So this is not acceptable. In the second one, we have 0 0.5 minus this. So we only change the sign. Now we have 0 0.5 minus 2.2915. And of course, this is going to be equal to minus 1.7915. And you can see that the absolute value of this is less than 2.236. So this value of x is acceptable. For the next value, we have minus half that is 0 0.5 plus the square root of 17 is approximately 4.123 over 2 that is this now this is equal to 0 0.5 plus 2 into 4 is 2 2 into 1 2 into 12 2 into 3 1 5 here you have minus 0 0.5 you have 5, 1, 6, 1. Now, you can see that this value of x satisfies this condition because it is less than 2.236. So, this is acceptable. And for the last value, we still have this. The only difference is in the sign. So, we have minus this is minus so we are going to have 0 0.5 and minus minus is plus so we are adding this is 5165.2 minus so here you have minus 2.5615 you can see that the absolute value of this does not satisfy this condition because it is greater than 2.236 so this is not acceptable so the only two values of x that satisfy this square root equation are this and that and with that we come to the end of today's exercise i hope you learned something new if you enjoy such content please subscribe to the channel leave us a like to support the channel thanks for watching and see you in the next one